Why hello, you people from Earth and outer space. It is I, Alexander from the universe. In this episode of Let's Rust, we're going to go and install ourselves the Rust programming language. Without the Rust programming language compiler, we're not actually going to be able to do much with Rust. Our programming career in Rust is going to be very short-lived unless we go and install it. And uh, depending on what system you're on, uh, there are two different ways in which you can install it. There's either the Windows way or the Unix way, which supports both Mac and Linux, considering they're both Unix-based systems. Since I'm on a Windows, I am going to start with the Windows way first. So go ahead and open up your internet browser. And in the little search bar up here, we're going to want to type in win.rustup.rs. It's going to take us the installer page for Rust. You can see I've downloaded a whole lot of them <laughs> prior to this video. <laughs> They're good to have, you know, like seriously. So you're going to want to press this. This is going to open up a little installer interface and you're going to want to type in yes here, like a little Y. And then you're going to want to proceed with the installation. Bam. Rust is installed now. Great. Wonderful. Did a great job on that. And we can follow up by pressing the enter key. Well, we should be able to press the enter key. We should be able to press the enter key. Yeah, there we go. We pressed the enter key. <laughs> so Rust is now installing your computers. Great job, people. However, if you're on a Unix-based operating system, you are going to want to type in into your terminal now. So you're going to want to open up your terminal and you're going to want to type in curl. Curl. I can't type on my keyboard. This is horrible. Curl. <laughs> Step it up here. <laughs> Can I type down there? You know, I'm typing curl. HTTPS colon slash slash sh rust up dot rs dash lowercase s uppercase s lowercase f vertical bar s h into your terminal now not into your internet browser that's just silly and that's going to automatically update update it's going to automatically install rust for you as well as um straight possibly keep it up to date as well so that's really awesome if you're on a unix based system good for you because you're not going to have any travel update in rust anytime soon so that command is really wonderful and as soon as that's through it's gonna say good for you rust is installed happy people everywhere or not with that being said our next order of business is trying our rust compiler out making sure it works so if you're in a windows you're gonna want to open up your command prompt if you're on a mac you're gonna want to open up your terminal uh, as with Linux, Unix based systems. Hello. <laughs> no? Uh, so, as for Windows, we're going to press Windows key R to get our little run window up. And we're going to type cmd.exe and just do that. We get our terminal window up. And in here, in order to test out Rust, we're going to type in Rust C with a version flag. So, we're going to check for the version of our Rust compiler. And it's going to say something like this, Rust C 1.12.1, DF4, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to do the exact same thing on Mac and Linux. Isn't that wonderful? We now know we've got Rust on this computer. That is beautiful. Like, seriously. Go ahead and open up your favorite text editor. Now, uh, we're going to be using this text editor for the rest of the series. So uh, do choose one that you like. You can, however, go off on your own and try installing one of the Rust IDEs. Since we've already got some really nice build tools that we're going to be discussing in the next episode, uh, it's not really required to have a good IDE. But I'm going to stick with Notepad++ because it's done me well for many years and it's always been great. It's worked. So in Notepad++, we're going to write a simple test program to make sure everything really worked. Because, like, I mean, it could have worked kind of, but not really. <laughs> so in order to try this out, we're going to type in some code, some Rust code. The first thing we're going to type in is fn main parenthesis 
new line curly brace curly brace and in here we're gonna be tapping in print line exclamation mark parenthesis and oh quote double quotes and hello world semicolon we're gonna save this uh, I've got a folder on my desktop called Rust Tome, and this is where we're, I'm going to be saving my work. Uh, it is kind of recommended to make yourself a folder where you got all your Rust projects, but in two episodes, we're going to go over the build tool for Rust, which really simplifies our life. So save this file as hello world.rs. RS is the file extension for Rust programs. I'm going to save, and it's going to light up nicely because I've got a Rust syntax installed for Nova Plus Plus. It doesn't count with the uh, syntax highlighting, but you can install it yourself. So everything is nice and lit up, and we'll save our file. Let's go ahead and run this file. You can open up your our CMD, or alternatively, on if you're on a Unix system, you're gonna want to open up your terminal, and you want to head to the location where you save the file. Now, if you're new to navigating inside the CMD, or the terminal for that matter, you're going to want to type in CD for change directory. That's the same for both the terminal and the command prompt. CD desktop, because it's inside my username folder, which is right OP, man. <laughs> you want to do that. Hit, hit enter. You're going to be inside the desktop. Now, mine's located inside the Rust Tome. The Rust Tor browser? Yeah, I, I don't use the Tor browser. <laughs> oh man, Rust Tome. There you go. Should have it in manual all along. We're inside the Rust Tome browser. Browser? Folder. <laughs> so you want, if you're on Windows now, you're going to type in DR, DIR for directory. If you're on, on a, a Unix based system, you're going to type in LS instead. Uh, to see it to view all the files we can see in here we got a file called hello world.rs we want to compile this file in order to compile it we're gonna use the rust compiler command the rust c that we used before when you check for the version uh, this is the same goes for unix based operating systems so type in rust c and then the name of the file which is hello world.rs there is something worth noticing about the file name they should all be written in lowercase snake case which means you should have all letters in the file name lowercase as well as underscores for blank spaces you want to hit enter and it should have compiled the file for us it would type dir again or ls we're going to see a little hello world.exe on Windows on Unix based system, <laughs> it's gonna be lacking a file extension, but it's gonna do the same thing. So, as for Windows running, Windows users, you wanna type in hello world, just that. Hit enter. As for Mac and Linux users, you're, you're gonna wanna type in dot, <laughs> you're gonna wanna type in a dot, and you're gonna wanna type in a slash. So period slash hello world, that's gonna run your file. So for Windows users, don't do that, just type in hello world, hit enter, it's gonna say hello world. Isn't that beautiful? Congratulations people, you just wrote your first Rust program. <laughs> oh, just look at that, it says hello world in the console. Oh man, oh, I get so happy by looking at it. Like seriously, this is a really advanced program. Just look at this code. You wrote all this code all by yourself? Oh man, you're good at this. In the next episode, we're gonna be discussing why this works, what this does, because otherwise you ain't gonna be very proficient unless you know what stuff does. So we're gonna be talking about that in the next episode. Why goodbye, you people from Earth and outer space. Feel free to leave a comment stating something utterly hilarious or perhaps even a like. Until next time.